There are three handy tricks you can use to instantly improve the quality of difficult cutouts in Photoshop. These tricks will take you from something like this to something like this in just a couple of minutes. But before you can truly benefit from these tricks, we gotta rewind the clock a bit and start by addressing how we get to the point that these tricks can even be useful in the first place. To understand that, you need to first understand channels. Now, channels is a selection technique that you can use when you have really complex edges like trees or hair branches, for example, that would not be possible to select with any other tool. To give you an example here, if I zoom in, we can see how these tiny little tree branches basically create a million different edges that would be absolutely impossible to select with any of our other selection tools. With channels, however, we can use image contrast to separate the tree branches or the little details from your photo from the background. The only prerequisite is that there is contrast between your object and the background. If this tree was against a bunch of other dark trees, this would not work. However, most of the time this technique will be used when you have something along a horizon line, if you're replacing the sky or something like that. Now channels itself isn't technically a tool, but it's a panel and that panel can be found beside the layers panel here. But if you don't see it, just go up to window and down to channels to reveal it. Now, if we click between each channel, each one has varying levels of contrast for red, green, and blue because we're in the RGB color mode. If you are working in a different color mode, you would have different sets of channels here with different levels of contrast, depending on how much color from each channel makes up your total image. Now, at first, it might be a little confusing how contrast can be turned into a selection. But if we think of a layer mask where black is 100% invisible and white is 100% visible, that means that black and white in Photoshop can be used to define a selected area. To be more specific, if we can make our foreground elements one color and our background elements another color, between black or white, then we can create a clean selection of all of those edges. With the help of channels, we get the starting point for that contrast, as you can see here, and then we can improve it with some refinement techniques. In this case, I have the blue channel selected, which has the most contrast between the trees that I want to cut out and the background. Your channel might be a little bit different, or it might not look this contrasty right out of the gate, but fortunately, we can touch all of this stuff up. All that matters for now is that you select the channel that has the most contrast between what you want to select and the background. With that channel found, we want to duplicate it by clicking and dragging that channel to the new layer icon at the bottom of the channels panel to create a copy. That way, we're not going to mess up any of the colors in the original image. With that copy layer selected, let's go and add some further contrast to this so that we can make this entire foreground area black while the entire background becomes white. To add contrast, we can either use levels or curves. In this case, I'm going to use levels by pressing Command or Control L while the blue copy channel is selected or in your project, whatever duplicated channel you created. Now, if we zoom into the photo just to get a better look at the fine details here, we can use the these level sliders to increase the black point and therefore make all the dark areas darker or increase the white point to make the white areas whiter. But the problem that you'll notice is if you zoom in really close, if you bring these points too close together, all of the tree branches or little details that you're trying to select will begin to break up and look kind of pixelated like this. So you want to adjust your contrast adjustment until you are starting to just lose those details, but you're still adding a little bit of contrast from the original channel. Every photo is going to be a little bit different, so I'm just going to play around with these until I find something that works for the photo, but again, taking care not to destroy the little details here. In this case, I'm happy with how that is looking. I've increased the shadow point quite a lot in this case, but again, every project is gonna be a bit different. And looking at the entire photo, you can now see that we have a much more contrasty image. I'll click OK. But we still have to get rid of some of the gray that's up in the sky because gray will be partially visible. And then we also need to fill in the foreground so that all of this is fully black as well so that we don't have any holes in our selection. To fix that, we can use the brush tool just by pressing B on our keyboard then we can go and choose our brush settings. I'll choose a hard round brush and then I'll set my foreground color to black so I can paint on that selected channel and then just remove all of the white that we see here, which will improve our final selection. You can scale that brush up and down using the bracket keys and I'll just fill in all of the areas along the grass here. 
Now up in the sky, we could do a similar process, but there's a problem that we'll have. If I were to switch my foreground color to white, still painting with the same brush, I could go and just paint over the sky like this to, of course, add white into there. But there's still that gray around the little details that we want to keep. And if I were to go and paint over there, it's going to remove those details. So how can we remove the gray while keeping all of those nice details around the tree? Well, that is where we can use some brush blending modes or the dodge and burn tools to fix all of these things up. The first method that you can use is while the brush tool is still active, still painting with white, we can change the layer blending mode from normal down here to overlay. When we choose this brush mode, it will allow us to paint over areas that are gray and it will not affect any of the black areas. So for example, if I go and paint over here, you can see how it removes the gray, but it doesn't remove the tree branches here. In some cases, it can look a little bit too intense and it can begin to break up the details around the edges of your selection. So if that's the case, another method that we can go and call upon is the dodging and burning tools. So I'll just undo that so we can go back to where I began. And this time I'm going to use the dodge tool in this case. If you're painting in a white area, you'll use the dodge tool. If you're painting in a black area, you'll use the burn tool. But in this case, since I'm painting in a white area, I'll choose dodge. Then I'll go and set the range to highlights and then the exposure, you can set it to a pretty high value, something like that. With this good to go, because we have the range set to highlights, this tool is only going to target the highlights in the photo and that excludes the tree branches in this case because those are more in the midtones or the shadows. So that means we can just freely go and paint around these edges without worrying about those tree branches breaking up and looking weird as they might have looked with the overlay blend mode and the brush tool. So I'm just gonna take a moment to paint around the entire photo here until I have removed all of the gray and things that are left over in the sky. So I have a perfectly white background and a perfectly black foreground. I'll meet you when all of that is complete. Now with my refinements made, we can turn this into a selection by holding command or control and clicking on the thumbnail of that duplicated channel. While holding command or control and clicking on that thumbnail, that will allow us to select all of the visible pixels on that channel, which in this case will be all of the white pixels. Going back to the layers panel, I can click on the image layer and then apply a layer mask to apply that selection and cut out the image. Since this is the opposite of what we want, we can just click on the layer mask here, press command or control I to invert it. And now we have successfully cut out this photo. Now we've done the bulk of the heavy lifting, but to take this cut out from decent to incredible, we have three handy tricks that we're about to apply next. But before we do, make sure to grab your free copy of today's lesson cheat sheet in the description below, where I break down every step in this tutorial in a bite-sized PDF. That way you can quickly review all of these processes and refinement tricks at a glance in your next project. Again, you can grab that for free in the description or pinned comment below. But with that, let's begin by calling upon the first and one of my favorite refinement tricks in Photoshop. To better see how these refinement tricks are going to look, let's go and apply a new sky into the background here. Now with that new image placed, you'll notice that we have quite a few problems with the selection. We have this little bit of white pixelation all the way around our selection, and that is something called fringing. This is something that's just a little bit of pixels left over from the original cutout that are still visible after our selection. So the first trick that we can use to fix this and improve the look of our selection is by creating a color fill and then using an inverted layer mask. I'll explain why that works in just a minute here. To begin, let's start by clicking on our image layer and then adding a new black color fill above that image layer. I'll do that by clicking on the adjustments icon and going to solid color. Then I'll set my color to black and we'll click OK. Now to ensure that this color fill only targets the underlying image, we can right click on it and go to create clipping mask so that it is only visible within the visible pixels of our underlying image. But I only want this color fill to target that like one pixel area that is creating all of the fringing in our photo. To do that, we can just duplicate and invert our image layer mask. The reason that this works is because when we invert a selection in Photoshop, there's just a slight bit of 
overlap between the inversion. So then that way we're able to target just the outer edge of our selection. To make this a little more clear, let's just go ahead and do it. I'll begin by clicking on the image layer mask and I'll duplicate it to the color fill. We can do this very easily just by holding Alt or Option and clicking from the image layer mask and dragging it to the color fill layer and letting go. Again, just while holding Alt or Option while you click and drag. Now clicking on the color fill layer mask, I'll press Command or Control I to invert it. So therefore, it's now going to be applied to everywhere except for the trees. But remember, like I said, there is that one pixel overlap after we do the inversion. And because we have a clipping mask making this color fill target the underlying image, so it's only visible within the visible pixels of this underlying image, that means that this color fill is only visible in that like one pixel area that is affecting our fringing. Turning this on and off, you can see exactly how that is being applied into our photo now and it makes all of those little details look a lot more realistic. You can zoom in a bit closer so you can see what's going on. It doesn't necessarily solve our problems as a whole but it already looks a lot better and with the other two techniques that we have coming up we can fix this even further. But this is the first step in making those complex cutouts look really really clean. Our second step is when we have fringing that is along a simple edge such as the grass here. If I look at the grass we can see that there's that fringing all the way along it and this really makes our selection look low quality. Fortunately the selection edge is okay it's just the colors that we see that we want to get rid of. So using a new layer with a clone stamp tool we can just go and cover up all of that fringing while still keeping the same original texture from the image. So this is tip number two for refining our complex cutouts. To begin, we want to create a new layer for our clone stamp adjustments to be applied on. We then only want it to be painted onto our image layer, so we'll add a clipping mask by right clicking and going to create clipping mask, so now both of these layers can only be visible within this image here. I'll call this to fringing clone, and then access the clone stamp tool by pressing S. Up in the options bar, I'll choose the soft round brush for my clone stamp tool with the blend mode set to normal, opacity and flow at 100%, and then I'll make sure that my sample is set to current and below. With that all good to go, I'll begin just over on one half of my image here. I can scale up the brush and then hold Alt or Option to set my sample point, and the clone stamp tool will take that sample point and then paint it wherever we click and drag. So where you can see that little crosshair, it's taking the pixels underneath the crosshair and then using those pixels to paint underneath the brush. Therefore, we are filling in all of that fringing and removing the unwanted bits that we don't want in our selection anymore. So we can just continually reset our sample by holding Alt or Option and then just continuing to paint over any fringing and that will solve all of our problems there. This is a really useful trick that we can call upon when we have simple edges that we need to refine. This isn't going to work for the tree branches necessarily, but it does work really well for things like the grass or other horizon lines. I'm just going to continue this process and I'll meet you when all of this is complete. With that fringing adjustment complete, turning that on and off, you can see how much better the grass now looks and the edge looks a lot more convincing, especially among the trees here. Now at this point, our image is coming along, but we still have a bit of pesky fringing that we want to deal with. So this is the third and final useful trick that you can use to fix up these complex selections. And that is just using your brush tool with a variety of colors and the blend if option to just go and paint around all of the fringing that you want to hide. So to begin, I'll create a brand new layer at the top of the layer stack for all of these adjustments to go on. And then just like the other ones, I only want it to be applied to my image. So I'll right click on the new layer and go to create clipping mask so it can only be applied within the visible pixels of this image it's clipped to. I'll rename this to fringing brush and we'll begin by accessing the brush tool by pressing B and then we'll choose a soft round brush with an opacity at 100% and flow at 100%. Also make sure to reset your blending mode of your brush back to normal. With that good to go, we'll hold Alt or Option to sample a color from your image. In this case, I'll choose this brown color and then scale up the brush and then paint that brown color over any of the nearby branches here, so something like that. I'll then go and reset that 
color just by holding alt or option and clicking in a new area and then just painting over that like so and we can just continually update these colors as we click and paint around different areas to cover up the fringing we still have to do some blending but for now i'm just going to paint around some of the image a bit more i'll go and sample a bit more of the green from the trees and then just paint over the edges like that and hopefully you get the idea now at this point it's pretty obvious that this is just a brush and it doesn't look very blended so we have a couple of different options we can use the first is just lower the opacity of that layer by lowering the layer opacity like so and then that will often make it look a little bit more convincing like that turning it on and off you can see it gives us a nice result like so alternatively you can try using a few different blending modes you can try something like multiply you can try something like screen or overlay or soft light one of these four options can work but in this case I'm just going to leave it set to normal and then the third and final option you can try is using blend if so double clicking on the fringing brush layer within the blending options of layer styles, we can use the underlying layer slider of blend if to remove this layer's visibility from the shadows of our tree. And therefore it will only be visible in the highlights, AKA the fringing of the tree layer. To do this, we can just click and drag on the underlying layer slider's black point and move this over. So we're telling Photoshop that we don't want any of these colors to be visible within these exposure ranges behind this point. We can then feather this transition by holding Alt or Option and clicking outside of that point to split it into two. And this will create a soft transition between where this layer can be visible and not visible within our exposure range. So I'll continue to move this over like so until it is just isolated to the upper range of the midtones and a little bit of the highlights there. This looks pretty good to me like that, so I'll click OK. And now with those blending adjustments made, we can just continue to repeat the process of accessing our brush tool, sampling a specific color that we want to paint over our tree, and then just using that color to remove some of the fringing within the tree. But because of our blending options, it's going to help make things look a little bit more realistic. So I'm just gonna take a few moments to paint over the colors of the tree here, all the way around the entire image, holding Alt or Option to sample new colors constantly. And I'll meet you when all of this is complete. Now, after going around the entire image and painting on that fringing brush layer, I can turn that on and off and you can see the difference there. If I zoom in a little bit closer, we can and see it a little bit more obviously where there was that blue fringing all around the trees and things. We're basically filling that in with a nice color and it's still blended realistically into the photo because of the low opacity as well as our blend if adjustment. So this is that nice final touch that we can do to improve the selection. But after using all three of those techniques, we can turn those on and then off you can see the massive difference that that makes in improving the quality of that selection edge, the realism of that selection, and it still keeps so many of the little details that would have been impossible to select otherwise. Now, after all of these techniques are applied, you can go and do the blending of putting your subject into a new background. Maybe this sky doesn't really work for the lighting in this photo, but since our selection is complete, we could put in a whole bunch of different skies and it's still going to look great because all of the hard work is done. Now these are some of my personal favorite refinement techniques, but I'd be curious to know what other strategies you think are useful that I didn't mention here. Let me know in the comments below what other useful tips I or other viewers might find interesting if you have them. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed today's lesson and be sure to grab your free copy of the lesson cheat sheet in the description below, breaking down every step that we discussed here. Anyways, with that, I'll see you next time.